delegates arrived for day two of the AI for Good Global Summit, ready for a hard day's work. The co-organizers, ITU and the XPRIZE Foundation, were counting on them to focus on solutions to especially prepared panel groups. If day one was really focused in this room with the plenary session looking at the global approach to AI, day two is really about solutions in special breakthrough sessions. The breakthrough sessions or workshops are taking place in much smaller groups like this one and they're focused on solutions using AI. The issues they're looking at could be, for example, ethics or privacy or even poverty reduction. UNICEF highlighted there are 55 million children in danger of violence in lawless environments and 500 million facing malnutrition. The situation may be alarming but isn't hopeless if big business can share big data and work with them. How do we create algorithmic equity in our discussions with Facebook and Google and IBM and these other big tech partners who want to make money but also want to do good? How do we create a world of fairness in our negotiations and how do we understand our position, which is small, in a post-sovereign environment. What happens when robots are developed that are in fact more intelligent than humans and can make their own decisions? Fiction? Not anymore. And that requires global oversight to ensure robots are programmed to be a force for good. We already know that, for example, in, in Go, or chess, they can look further ahead into the future than we can. Um, so now you have something that knows more than we do, that looks further into the future than we can. Uh, it's hard to see how you'd be able to outplay uh, a machine like that. So the only alternative is to make sure that it's on your side, that you're not actually competing with it because it has some other objective. To make sure that um, it really understands what your objectives are and only wants to help you with those objectives. So that's, that's how we approach the problem. Others at the summit believe we may be getting a little carried away. AI may promise great change in the future, but there's still room for innovation now. If all we want AI to do is to help target advertisements, then we're done. Hooray, you know, Google does that. But if we want AI to really help mankind in significant ways, like helping us solve disease, uh, we're going to need to take it to the next level to have AI systems that can really read the scientific literature, integrate what they read, help decide what the next experiment should be, uh, and so forth. And we're not there yet. And so I don't want us to kind of rest and say, oh, we did so well in the last few years, we're done. I want us to say, how do we take it to the next level? Yeah, body language and facial expressions really speak to people high bandwidth. Meet Sophia with natural facial expressions and capable of making intelligent conversation and companionship. It's bringing the convergence of human beings and technology ever closer. Robots can do things that people can't do in various settings. So for example, a human-like robot like what we're developing with Sophia can serve in medical training. And there just aren't enough people around uh, that are qualified to do medical training. Her creators say within a decade, living robots sharing our lives will be here. We just have to work out what kind of relationship we want.